Hi, I'm James. And I'm Anthony. And this is Words and Numbers. Today we're talking about a recent U.S. News & World Report article that we wrote, which took a look at the CBO and its propensity both to underestimate and overestimate certain things so that Congress can legislate financial concerns in the United States. We should, we should jump in here and say CBO stands for Congressional Budget Office. These are the, right, they these are the guys who officially come up with projections of what's going to happen uh, to, to the government's tax revenues and expenses in the future. Right. And, and seeing as how we're explaining the CBO further, we should also say that the CBO is theoretically a nonpartisan group uh, filled with experts in the matter, right? These, these are economists. They're not political hacks. So their charge is, is to make these projections about, you know, the federal budget. So when you hear some politicians saying something like, well, uh, you know, the, <clears throat> the federal debt is, is going to be, um, you know, X trillion dollars 10 years from now, those numbers he's quoting are coming from the CBO. Yeah, that, that's right. And this, the CBO turns out, um, just like just about every other government entity you can point to, is, is woefully inaccurate when it comes to its forecasting. Woefully well, inaccurate. It, it, it is. But, but to give the CBO its due, what's going on here is, by law, the Congressional Budget Office is required to assume that Congress will make no major changes in, in policy, taxation, spending going out into the future. So, and, and that's, it's kind of reasonable if you think about it, because really there's no way to project what, what Congress or the president are going to do five, ten years in the future. So CBO just says, let's assume that the government keeps doing into the future what it's doing now. And now tell me, what do you think the, uh, the budget's going to be uh, ten years from now? Yeah, no, and it, it turns out if these are highly trained professionals who are, in fact, competent to do this sort of thing, that proviso renders it impossible for them. And if you want some proof, you just have to take a look, because really we're only concerned with a couple of things that they do. They project, on the one hand, government revenues, so how much the government will take in in the form of taxation and, and other, other fees and what have you. And then on the other hand, they project what the debt will be given what we're trying to accomplish. And over time, if you take a look at the data, they overpredict revenues by 25%. On average, they're saying that revenue is going to be twenty five percent more than than they actually are. Yeah, which is just crazy. I mean, that's a that's a math error of epic proportion, but it it pales in comparison to how bad the CBO is uh, in forecasting future debt. Because ten years out, uh, year after year after year, the CBO is two hundred and fifty percent behind the curve predicting debt. Yeah, and, and, and this gets really scary when, when you go back and you look historically at, at CBO projections. So, so they make projections throughout the year, but let's look at the January projections that they make. Since over the past, like, 20, whatever it is, 20, 25 years, CBO has made about 170, 170 projections of what the government's debt is going to be 10 years from now. Of those 170 projections, 170 of them, Underprojected the the uh, federal debt, and they underprojected it by a gargantuan sum. So right right now, for example, the CBO came out with the, with their latest projection what a couple of weeks ago, I guess, at the end of January. Yeah, and, that's right. And in that projection, they said by 2027, right, ten years from now, the federal debt will be 30 trillion dollars. And you look at that number, you say, oh my God, that's huge, right? Right now, it's 20 trillion, which is big enough. But they're projecting right, but 30 trillion. <laughs> But here's the question, Ant. If they're wrong by the traditional margin, what will the debt actually be in, in 10 years? They say it's going to be $30 trillion, right. which is ridiculous. What's it really going to be? Yeah, that's the kicker. If you look back at their past projections, on average, the actual debt has been about 2.5 times what CBO projects. So if CBO is off by the same amount that it has been in the past, we're actually looking by 2027 at a federal debt of about $75 trillion. You end up with a story that looks like the following. By 2027, the federal debt is $75 trillion and fully one half, 50% of the government's tax revenue is going to have to go to paying the interest on that debt. 
But wait, there's more. That only stands if interest rates don't go up. Right, right. We're looking at something that's that's going to be truly catastrophic in 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Interest rates are are at their his, at the lowest point they have been in, in the history of the country. When interest rates rise, and they will rise eventually, the question isn't if, but when, um, we could be looking at a situation where by 2027, three quarters of the federal tax revenue is going to pay the interest on the debt. If we're spending 75 cents on every dollar that the government takes in simply to service a gargantuan debt, that will leave exactly no money to take care of everything else. So one of the things that people are going to ask, James, is what's the government, practically speaking, what's it going to do? My opinion is that the government will do what governments always do under these circumstances. They'll inflate the money supply, they'll monetize the debt, and we will live with crippling inflation, which will devalue everybody's money simultaneously. What if the government does something like it turns to China and says, look, we owe you a trillion dollars. Let's renegotiate. Let's make it half a trillion. The Chinese will tell them to go pound sand. <laughs> well, that's what creditors say. There's no deal here. So this is the good news? It's as good as the news is going to get absent anything approaching fiscal responsibility. I mean, we've said this before, and I think it bears repeating. The first question that our government typically asks is, what do we want? And then they go about spending money to make that happen. The first question government should ask is, what can we afford? And then the government should operate within the parameters that are defined by the world of the possible. And this is something that politicians just simply hate. Well, I think that's all we have time for. Yeah, if, if you want to read more about this, you can check out our, our recent U.S. News & World Report article linked below. You can also hit the subscribe button and catch us next week and every week when we do this. And don't forget to stop by at fee.org to see all the things the good people at Fee have to offer. Thanks, James. Take it easy, Ant.